Good morning. Well, good morning. And How welcome are you? to my Facebook Live uh, with Lily and Christine. Yay! <laughs> uh, we did it. Uh, yes, we did it. Um, and hopefully everybody has had a good Christmas and New Year. In spite of all the challenges, um, we were snowed in for a good week here. Of course, here in Seattle, you know, um, it doesn't take that much snow because they snow plow the main roads. But of course, none of the minor roads get snow plowed. So, you know, we couldn't get down our driveway. So, you know, it's been challenging. I but, have uh, a, I have a memory of being, I think it was a long ago, but it was a big snow like you guys just had. And I lived in the U district and people were sledding using uh, trays from the cafeteria at UW, and they were also cross-country skiing to get to Safeway to get groceries. So, yeah. <laughs> I can imagine, yes. Well, you know, we're not far from a park here that last year when it snowed like this and we did go up, it, um, um, it was crowded, of course, with people sledding and uh, um, cross-country skiing, and that was when we attached Goldie to the sled. And she had an absolute ball pulling us around. She loved it. In fact, I think when it snowed this year, this is Goldie's our dog, for those that don't know, <laughs> um, Golden Retriever. And when it snowed this year, I think she was expecting this to happen. But, of course, unfortunately, the young couple that used to organise it aren't here anymore. And so she didn't get to do that. And um, I'm still having challenges post-operatively, so I wasn't up to it at all. So it's, um, yeah, but. It, well, the it, way the, the way the weather looks, it, you could get some more. I heard my friends in Vancouver Island said they were expecting eight to 10 inches today. And oh, then, really? Yeah. They're getting so, more up there. Definitely up in BC, they're getting, British Columbia, they're getting more than we got. I mean, they have had, pray for the people in British Columbia. They have had so many, in, in fact, I understand they're front, front runners for the uh, 2021 most severe weather events of the year. Uh, because, you know, they had that, the fires and then they had the atmospheric river that dumped on them. Uh, and now they've got these huge snowstorms. And it's just, it's really bizarre. And they're getting hit in every every way, every possible way. So it's been a very challenging season for them, I think. So yeah, it's a so, great, it, we need, that's why we need to focus every day on, yes. on what God is doing today and the beauty of today, because it's just like every week seems to be a little more crazy or comes with something traumatic. And that's, um, we were going to oh. talk about the beginning of the year is 12th night. So when I was a kid, can we talk about 12th night? Cause I didn't know anything sure. about it. Well, and I, I know I didn't either, but I am so enjoying the rituals associated with uh, Twelfth Night and Epiphany at the moment. You know, started observing it really a couple of years ago. And it's like, this is a hugely important anchoring kind of um, time with rituals that are very sustaining and very renewing in every possible way. And what I'm holding my hand is my epiphany star. So I love that, it. Um, I'm going to put it in. I haven't had a chance to redo my garden yet, but I'm putting it in my old one and uh, until I get the new one made. So, but 12th night, yes. What were you going well, so to I say? Didn't, so when I was a kid, I had a great aunt. Her name was Dot. And she was the person I, I did crafts with, like we used to paint pottery together and like she would do the molded kind, um, you know, that you fired and then you like napkin rings and Santas and all these different things. So I would go and paint with her. Um, and then I would, she made really exquisite um, ornaments. That was another thing she did, but she talked about, she was the first, I don't know what her, her church background wasn't Episcopal. So, uh, but she would talk about 12th night and the 12 days of Christmas, but no one in my family, we didn't, we didn't have that practice or that celebration until, and I really didn't know anything about it until I got to be on staff in the Episcopal church. And I was the spiritual formation director. And at that church, we didn't get to have, we really didn't decorate the church. We had 
wreaths on the door, but they had purple for Advent. And the church really didn't get decorated big time until Christmas Eve, because in the church year calendar, Christmas season doesn't start until then, till Christmas day is the first day of the 12 days of Christmas. And so I had then you really did get to celebrate Christmas because you had the 12 days post to Epiphany, which is tomorrow, but the 12th night. So tonight is the 12th night of Christmas. And then tomorrow we celebrate Epiphany, which is the, the celebration of the light of the world coming to all of the world, not just the Jewish people, but the Gentiles because of the Magi. And I seriously, that is my favorite now, one of my favorite holidays to celebrate because you get to retell the story of, of the coming of Jesus. And you don't have to, uh, you get a, as a youth pastor, I used to love it because people and, you know, students were so busy during December that I got to tell the story again, um, you know, coming back from holiday time together. And I used the whole season. I, I celebrate a season of Epiphany, uh, Christine, not just one day. Um, I'd use the whole January January, um, the rest of January to be the season of epiphany, just so we keep that star and that light coming into all the world, because it's so dark, especially in our part of the world in, you know, in Seattle, it's such a dark, dingy, kind of dreary time, not in like Australia or New Zealand where you get the, where it's summer. Um, but yeah, for here, we do, we need all the light of the world as we can get. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and, and I love it. And there are so many beautiful rituals associated with this season. I've been learning some of these that really attract me uh, over the last few, few years. And I've been, you know, kind of highlighting some of those in the Facebook group so that people are aware of some of the things that a lot of people wouldn't be aware of, like the chalking the door. You know, that's one that's that's really fun. And to be honest, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you exactly what you put on the chalking of the door. So you'd have to look at that uh, post uh, or, you know, look at it somewhere else in order to, to find that. But it really... We did the, initials, the, the initials of, th of the traditional three wise men yes. and the, and the yeah. date of the and the date of the year and then that's a cross it. and a cross in between them. Exactly. Um, yes, that's it. Yeah. And we've still got the ones up from last year. So we need to go out and change them. And I must say, um, you know, it's much more of a European practice, though, as I said, a lot more people here in the United States are starting to do it as well, I've noticed. And it is, it's, it's something, and, and we always do a house blessing with it as well. I think the two, combining the two is a wonderful way because you are, I mean, in a way you're welcoming people into your house you're opening the door of the house uh to anybody that might come in and, well, I and love like, yeah the, is it the is it the um irish who opened the door to yeah. in the new year open you you let in the new year and you open the back door if you have a back door to let out the the, the old year you uh, sweep everything out the, you sweep the old year out the back door and close it and then you open the new the front door to welcome the new year. Yeah, that's another one that I think is, is really, really neat. And then the other one that um, I'm definitely going to do again this year, but uh, we do it at church is, is the handing out of Star Wars, or Star Wars, <laughs> Star <laughs> Words. Star Words, words. yes. <laughs> and, and I think that's a beautiful practice as well, because you know, I mean, what it is, is suggesting to people that they have a word to help them focus in their meditations through the year. And now the star word, I, to be honest, I don't do it quite like this, because the star word is, in a way, picking out a random word and seeing what God might speak to you uh, through that word. So we, our associate rector, does out little stars with words on them and then you puts them in a basket hands them around the congregation and you pull, pull one out of the basket what I have a tendency to do more is that I um I don't uh uh go uh I, I don't have a random word I ask God for a word at the beginning of the year at epiphany you know that's the perfect time and my word for this year is digging deeper 
And I'm just starting to ask God what that means. I know it's two words, but that's okay. <laughs> it's a phrase. It's okay. It's a well, phrase. And, yeah. and the, the, well, it, at our practice for Thin Place, we've done Star Wars for several years. And as we haven't been meeting in person, last year, as we did a Zoom epiphany, and we're going to do a Zoom epiphany tomorrow night. And if anybody would like to join us, you just need to email me um, at Lily Lewin or freerangeworship at gmail.com. Um, but anyway, they, we, draw them out. And because I can't just do one word, Christine. So we do three, we each person gets three words and, but there I random because we weren't in person, I randomly drew them. And then it's like, how is this a gift to you? How, you know, and some people don't like, I remember a, lot, a couple of years ago when we were in person, um, we, so people didn't like some of the words. So like one person got the word abundance. And to me, abundance is like totally a Jesus wow word. And I was like, Ooh, I wish I'd get that word. But they were like, they didn't feel like they either deserved it or what do I do with that? That word felt, felt they didn't, couldn't. And that's what I love about the random part. If you do the random part is because then I believe the Holy spirit gives you a word that you really need for the year. Um, and then it's kind of, but you have to kind of sit with it each, you know, like a, where does yeah. that, where does that yeah. fit? Yeah. yeah. What does that fit? So I have pictures because you know me and the phone. Um, I <laughs> I take pictures of the word of the word so I in case I lose the star or something to remember. So I'll look back at the at the stars and go, oh, and it's a good practice to come back to at the end of the year if you did a star word last year to go to as the new year starts. Ooh, how is this, you know, how were these star words? How did I see them happen? And then how did I not see them happen? Especially when kind of we thought last year was going to go a different way than it might have gone, <laughs> might have gone. So, um, but it's a cool, it's a great, either way you do it, either receiving a word that God gives you and, or um, I've seen some random um, interesting ones on Instagram where they ask you to look at a, a, a word, kind of a sorting word, like we used to circle the words games practice. Um, mm -hmm. But you like the first three words you see, how are those your words for, for ah, the year? Interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that was, I, I tried it, uh, which were, it, it was interesting. Um, I'm not sure those are my words yet or not, but I'm going to at least sit with them and see uh, mm, what, yeah. they, what they say. And what I did the year with that uh, we did the Star Words at our church was I made, strange this, I made a garden. Of <laughs> and I put a star in the center of it, just out of rocks and little tiny pebbles, I should say. And then I painted a rock with the word, my word was depth. And I painted a rock with the word depth and I sat it in the center. So, you know, it was a great focus for the next few weeks. And it did, you know, I mean, it's interesting that my word for this year is digging deeper because I think that's kind of a theme of what God's been saying to me over the last few years. And I mean, I know I, I wrote down in my journal yesterday, digging deeper into the purposes to, of God, digging deeper into the practices of God, digging deeper into you know the relationships around me and and those so I, I mean obviously digging deeper has got a lot um to to really kind of uh get into there but yeah these and these kind of anchoring rituals are so important for us I think and, well, and uh, you, you and I have talked about one that I do. Um, my one of my practices has been practicing silence for like five days uh, as a part of my. I'm a birthday. Jan, we're both January birthday girls. Um, <laughs> as a part of my gift to myself, pre-pandemic, I would go spend time at the Abbey of Gethsemane in, up in Kentucky for five days of silence. And sadly, didn't haven't gotten to do that the last couple of years. But um, it's I'm going to see if that's a possibility for maybe February uh, this year. But one of the things I do, you don't have to go to a silent retreat to do this, is go through my calendar because I'm still a paper calendar person. Um, I go through my calendar and kind of look through and see what, you know, what did I notice? What did what what did I do? Um, what were the things that, st that stuck out? And I also take a lot of pictures as, as uh, Christine knows, uh, but I go through my photographs. <laughs> so, yeah, so, but it's a really great thing if you do take a lot of pictures on your phone to go back through your phone pictures um, and see what were the things that, that strike you. And for me, it was like, oh, there were some really good things about in the in the last year and then there were some really hard things you know you don't usually take pictures of the hard things although I've started taking pictures of messes because of, I know that Jesus comes in the mess um, of life and that you know we see perfect world in um in Instagram and Facebook world and that's not reality that that reality is our dining room tables are messy and we need to change that 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, but looking back through your phone and looking back through um, your, the year and pre-pandemic when I was a lot busier, it would show me why I was so tired because of all of the activities or travel or things that I did. Um, now it's showing me like, oh, I did, you know, I have a prayer practice of praying the neighborhood and I did some videos of pray, you know, praying the neighborhood about praying for the healthcare workers and for teachers and things like that. And I was like, oh, I'd like to go back and read, you know, start doing that again um, as, as like an intentional practice. I do pray for my neighbors, but I haven't been as intentional about praying for teachers and for <laughs> other you know as and especially as the pandemic waves again um it's nice to remember to to thank your you know the mail carriers and the trash guys and rubbish mm -hmm. people whoever the people who are serving us in the middle still serving in the middle of a pandemic um we can we can keep those practices going in the new year as well well and part of what we do which has a similar purpose is that we go on retreat and we are planning retreat for the end of the year, end of the year, <laughs> end of the month. Um, we found a doggy friendly um, Airbnb uh, last year that, uh, I mean, basically we don't have to see anybody while we're there, you know, so we're, we're pretty, pretty socially distanced in every possible way, which is nice, but um, it's up at Anacortes and, um, you know, so we go through a retreat process. And what I start with always is looking back through my journal. I have two journals, one of them kind of the uh, journal for every, I usually journal every week on Sundays. That's something Tom and I tend to do. And so I go back through the year and I circle the things, you know, that, that kind of stand out for me or I color them in a different color or something like that. And then I write up, you know, the first part of my uh, retreat time is writing up what I feel God said to me uh, through the year. And I have a special journal for our retreats. So I will also, if we've been, I think last year we only managed uh, one retreat away, obviously, for, you know, no strange reason. Um, but I also look at the, that retreat journal as a basis for, you, you know, kind of looking back and then discerning what God's saying, because I think the other part of this is discernment. You know, what is God saying to us for the, uh, the new year or for the year to come? And I know that people this year, a lot of people are very cautious about setting goals and, and things like that. But part of what I've realized, at least for myself, is the, the goals that I need to set and not for accomplishing products, but for um, uh, other things, you know, for relationships. Excuse me just a sec here. Let me place this. Sorry. Okay. I love I love that we have re it's real. So we're we're live and people visit and people come and go. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to find my keys. Um, we have construction awesome. going on, and I forgot about the fact that they needed the door open. She's having remodeling done at her house, so so people are helping. That's good. That's a good thing. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, we're getting one of our. Uh, you know, we live in a small intentional community, and and one of the apartments has been being renovated, and we will be looking for people to live in it in a week or two. Um, That's awesome. So that's, Guiding. Yes. And that's, you know, in a way, part of the discernment, you know, we're going over the principles of our community too. you know, what does it mean to live in the mustard seed house? That's what we call this small community. And what I would say that that's a really good evaluation for for lots of communities is what is our purpose going forward, in, especially because this is a new new world. I mean, I guess every every year is a new work, new year and a new um a new way to go, but it is for me personally, it's like, okay, I'm an extrovert. I'm a seven. I'm used to traveling to do my work, but that doesn't have, that's not happening as much. 
So how are we going to, how, how am I personally going to live into the new world of what if it's different than it has been? And I'm going to have to have more people some, somehow. And then also, how do we, what is our community? Because our community on Sunday nights, which is our Thin Place community, has changed so much because people have moved away during the pandemic for other work. And because uh, people are tired of meeting on Zoom. And, you know, what is that? How are we going to do what we're doing? And does it need to morph and change? And I would love my my prayer has been, how do we do more intentional stuff into the community? And also how are we more intentional with some pop-up sacred spaces for prayer that could be, you know, safely done um, even in the middle of the pandemic. So those are things that we're- libraries for spirituality. Ooh, that's cool. Ooh, uh, my spiritual director said she sees me like blowing, going and blowing bubble, like doing bubble prayers on the, on the street, to, you know, it, this, this was before the latest wave of the pandemic, but it was like doing, you know, just pop up pray, prayer things along the way, like, especially with, with all the tourists in Nashville. So um, that, that I'm thinking about how that could be done safely here. Uh, but yeah, I think those are reimagining what could be done in the middle of where we are. Oh, exactly. And, and um, I think it's a really good time to reevaluate the important things in our lives. And one of the things, you know, and I feel this is very remiss of me, um, is one of my friends on Facebook the other day mentioned about every year he um, kind of writes out a rule of life for the year. Yeah. Uh, and he looks at, you know, kind of his core values, uh, what does it mean in terms of his own practices, you know, in other words, self-care. Um, and then he did, uh, you know, kind of practices in terms of relationship with God uh, and then relationship with neighbours near and far, you know, including, of course, spouses, family, as well as those around the world. The dimension he didn't include in his, which I think is very remiss, is care for creation. Because yeah. I think that we need very definite goals in terms of that as well. And I was just listening to the latest uh, Earth Care um, podcast set out by Circlewood that, um, you know, is part of what, well, not part of, it's what our ministry became now called Circlewood. And, you know, very strong emphasis on... Um, sustainability of earth practices and what does that look like for us you know and and that's it's not just oh yes I love creation I'm going to go out and plant a tree but it's looking at every dimension of life and and how do we we live in light of uh you know our respect and concern for this planet I think that's that's thoroughly important as important as the other goals that we set and, and all of these, and, and my model is a model of shalom. You know, so what do we do that moves us towards our own inner wholeness? What do we do that moves us towards the wholeness in um, our relationship with God, wholeness in our relationship with those around us near and far, uh, and wholeness in our relationship to creation as well so you know I've got a lot of work to do this month kind of going through and setting some of those goals again reminding myself of that and the fact that these used to be well they still are but we haven't emphasized them as much the core of the way that we live and the way that this community functions too that we we're a part of so that's that's great I was thinking as you said that that one of you know the thing that God is just impacted me with in the last few years is, is rest and Sabbath. And uh -huh. that, that, you know, part of, you know, some people who haven't been as out um, during the pandemic are like, wait, I, why I've been home. I have, I don't need to rest more, but I think that we've had so many traumatic things happen uh, in the last few years that our, our spirits are exhausted and we're physically exhausted too. We don't even know because we've kind of been living on high alert for yes. so long and that we do need more grace for ourselves and more compassion for ourselves that it's okay to take a nap or it's okay to stop. It's okay to, it's okay to say, I can't do one more thing yes. uh, or, I, or I just need to say no um, and, be, and be aware of how you're, how you're physically feeling and how you're, how you're 
you know, if you need to, if you need to say, I just can't do anything for a couple of days uh, on a weekend versus going and doing more things, which I think we try to get more things done, especially if we haven't been doing things. We want to get more and more done versus no, what if it's just about being still and letting, you know, and letting yourself rest and letting yourself rest in God's hands. That's, that's one of my things that I'm, I'm focusing on again. It's like, okay, remember, remember that's a practice. Remember that's needed. Even though you want to go run and do things that you know, how are you, how do you need to heal your heal in that too? Well, and, and, you know, I, I, um, the book I'm reading at the moment is called the wild edge of sorrow. Um, very interesting. The subtitle is Rituals of Renewal and the Sacred Work of Grief. And to be honest, I think he talks more about the sacred work of grief than the rituals. He talks about the fact that we need these rituals, but he doesn't kind of define them as much as I'd like him to. Maybe I need concrete thinkers in order to process. But, you know, it's such an important um, process because he talks about how we live in a, a culture that uh, doesn't necessarily deny grief, but it dismisses it. Yeah. It tells people to get over it. It tells people yeah. to, you, you know, kind of get back to normal. I mean, <laughs> all this talk about getting back to normal in some right. ways is denial of grief. It's exactly. Denial of, we of got a lot of things to grieve. I mean, that's the, and exactly. it's, yeah. it's the practice we've done that is in, as a part of our grief, um, as a part of our grief workshop, I don't know, was it, what are we calling it? Curriculum? What are the, the package that we, you have on Godspace? Oh, but time the, to heal. The time uh, to heal. Time to heal. Yeah, of pouring out, I mean, the, the ritual for me of pouring out water and letting God hold our tears is a really powerful thing. And because I picked a, a huge vase um, to do that with, and it's here, you know, it's in my living room, even when it's not out someday, you know, some, right now we still have Christmas up, but Sometimes it's out on the on the counter. Sometimes it's it's just a, where I go and water a plant, but I see it. And so that visual connection to me of God holding my tears has really helped me go, okay, there are still things that need to be, you know, I need to grieve. I still need to keep pouring out, um, pouring out those things into the into God's hands so that I'm not carrying them around. Well, and and you know, I, it it occurs to me, I, I'd forgotten about that wonderful ritual that you do. Lily, that's the best ritual uh, in terms of grief that I've heard so far. You know, I mean, yes, I think um, uh, kind of expressing words of grief and things like that help, but we do, we need something concrete. And that's a beautifully concrete one of pouring out our tears and pouring them out before God. And it, it occurs to me, maybe the next Facebook Live we do should be talking about grief and what are the rituals that we found that help us grieve. Um, yeah, and one of, one of the things we're doing tomorrow night at our Thin Place um, Zoom epiphany is we're looking back at the last year um, with, with photographs and um, looking at, and I'm going to talk about this at Free Range Friday too, about how do we do the sweet and sour, that God is in our, the sweet things of the, of the last year, but also in the sour things too. And to actually do what we're going to do, people are bringing sweet things to taste and sour things to taste, mm -hmm. and that 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 we're going to pray that way with the tastes of, uh, you know, that God is in the sweet things and God is in the sour things. And how have we seen that? But also to mourn, wow, there's been a lot of stuff. I found some um, some links to people's photographs, like the New York Times and then some art, an art one. And it was really hard. The New York Times one for me, I didn't get through April looking through the looking through their photographs because there was just a lot of stuff that happened between January and April. Uh, yeah. So so that's a lot of heavy, heavy things that we need to process and realize some of that is still with us. And some of that, um, you know, one of the practices is like, what do we need to leave behind and what do we need to take with us into, mm -hmm. you know, into the year ahead? And, and I think how we, do we take it with us, you know, how do we take it with us? I think yeah. that's so important. And yeah. And how do we, you know, balance the joy and the sorrow? Because I think it is, you know, we've kind of, um, uh, taken that scripture you know be joyful in all things in a way too literally we've taken it to to mean let's deny our sorrows you know right and of course that's not what it means at all in fact in Jewish society people were given a year to mourn and to grieve after somebody close to them died you know uh and and most traditional societies 
have rituals of grief that go on for days or weeks or something like that, you know, and rituals that, that are so, so, so important. And, and yet somehow we've, um, uh, we've truncated those. You, you know, there might be, maybe there's a, a, a wake if somebody dies, maybe these days, or an online Zoom meeting, but that tends to be all. And, right. and that's not the way it should be. And you telling know, the story, I think that's another good thing. I was thinking, um, especially because we've heard of a couple of people who have passed away recently, is the telling of the stories is that the stories that we tell about the people that have, we've lost are really valuable. And yes. that that's, you know, how, how has that person impacted us? How is that, you know, how is, how, what are the memories that we have? Uh, you know, like the story I shared about my great aunt who's been dead, you know, many, many, many years, but each year when we get out those ornaments, we remember her. So yes. that there may be practical things uh, like that, like a, like a symbol or a story that we can keep as our as our memory and our, our our touchable tangible thing to carry with us at as we grieve or as we experience that joy and it's Lynn Babb is Lynn Babb who says carrying the grief and the gratitude that we have to yes. hold hold both in both you know in our hands I mean, um, yeah uh -huh. and it's, balance it's important. That. yeah it, it really is important and I think that Lily we're running out of time but I think that this is something we do need to give more time to uh, and to think of, and we're not just grieving. One of the, the chapter, he talks about five, um, what is it, five gates of grief. And the one that I'm just starting to get into is uh, the third gate, the sorrows of the world mm -hmm. and the sorrows. So it's not just the sorrows we're feeling for personal things, but it is, it's our sorrow, um, you know, for the situation in our world, both the violence, I think, but also mm -hmm. the climatic um, impact of, of human um, activity and, and all of these things. You know, we, we carry a grief. Some of us are more aware of it than others, but I think it's there for all of us and, and we do. We need to, to learn to grieve and, and, and to, if possible, do something about it too, but we do need to learn to grieve. For, to grieve for the, um, the, the species that are lost forever. Uh, yeah. to grieve for the, you know the, just as we grieve for the people that are lost forever uh, to grieve for the species that are lost forever too and and these are important things uh, for us to take into the future and I think epiphany is a good time to think about this because I was thinking you know I know one of the things of epiphany is the three wise men coming uh, but the other one it is also associated with it is the flight into Egypt I understand, you know, and I think they must have grieved at that time for the things that they were having to um, leave behind. behind. Yeah. In fact, I was speculating a couple of days ago, I was thinking, I wonder if those expensive gifts that the, um, uh, the Magi brought uh, if they went to financing their escape into Egypt. <laughs> oh, I've always thought that. I've always thought that, Christine. Oh, really? I've always thought that they <laughs> yes. provided the money. They didn't need, they had, they provided the way that they could be, they could live in Egypt till they got established. No, I always, yeah. that was a thing I just thought of is that I, I don't know where I got that, but I always thought that that was the way that they provided for them uh, to get, to get well, there. One of the fascinating things, and we haven't got time to talk about this, but I, I looked at it last year or the year before, I don't remember which, but, you know, in the Coptic church, the flight into Egypt is a very, very important tradition. Not surprising since the Coptic church is based in Egypt. In fact, they have documented um, the, the path that they would have taken. Oh, uh, that's cool. That's they, really oh, cool. yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Nice. And, and how they would have gone in order to avoid um being you know detected <laughs> on their on their passage through and uh yeah so it's it's you, you do so these are these are connected and there would have been i'm sure um for that's beautiful celebrated this time that there, there are things that are are important for us to think about that we don't normally think about 
as well. So yeah. Well, I have a I have a blessing that I wanted to leave with us. And as we talked about uh, Epiphany as the light coming, you know, celebrating the light coming to the whole world, not just the Jewish folks, but for the whole the Gentiles and the whole world. And um, one of the places that I get a lot of uh, guidance and help into the new into practicing as Celtic daily prayer. And this is the second volume uh, of that from the Northumbria community from the UK. But this wonderful, is called the wonderful resources. And they have two volumes. And so you could read, they have re daily readings. They have uh, things on the saints. They have blessings. Uh, they have practices, um, complins that you can do in the evening for like evening prayer. It's a great resource. And they have it online as well and an app, I think now. So well, the I'm, blessing, yeah, yeah go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say that the house blessing we use is an abridged and adapted form of a Northumbria um, uh, blessing, house blessing. That's, that's so. awesome. Well, this is very short. It's from Old Gaelic. It's called the blessing of light. May the blessing of light be upon you, light without and light within. And in all your comings and goings, may you ever have a kindly greeting from any you meet along the road. Amen and amen. Beautiful note to end on. Thank you, Lily. Yeah. Blessings bless for the new year. Blessings. Yes. Blessings for the new year. And we'll see you again on Facebook Live in two weeks' time. Have a great day. You too. Bye.